good afternoon ladies and gentlemen i hope you're doing well so today we're gonna go through some basic stuff which i think it is important and that's why i'm gonna be recording it applied econometrics one so so today's lesson we're gonna be talking about uh define time series process and their nature we're gonna be also talking about define what is meant by stationary process and covariant stationary process we will also define memory in econometrics and remember uh, we were going to be remembering some mathematical concept and how uh, how they apply in econometrics and we're going to be defining some uh, well-known uh, process in time series such as the autoregressive of order one and the moving average of order one and we're going to be defining what is meant by trend in a regression model uh, and obviously we're going to be imp the most important uh, thing in, in what we're going to be learning is what we mean by random walk and obviously we're only going to be and also we're going to be understanding what we mean by forecasting so remember what is the t nature of the time obviously characteristic of time se series data uh, that distinguishes them from cross-section data is temporal ordering we have spoken about this in class i just want to remind you that when we are talking about time series we are uh, we are not like we can only have single observation or realization uh, at a moment of time and i'm gonna give you some examples about this but when we are talking about cross-section we are disregarding time so we are only focusing on on so many aspects uh, like you know individuals different individual individuals but we are not like looking at each and every individual over time for analyzing time series data in the social science we must recognize that the, the past can affect the future but usually in vice versa so the future cannot affect the past but the past can affect the future so this data as you can see here this is year inflation and unemployment so you can see that it's at every year we have only one record of the inflation and one record of unemployment here we are talking about the u.s data so we cannot have like yeah like for one year two inflations for the u.s data right so this is the difference between cross-sectional and time series so how should we think about randomness in time series data so we, we have spoke about randomness when we are talking about cross section that they are different over time uh, they are different over individual but not over time okay but uh, we cannot say the same when we are talking about uh, uh, time series in time series we have we do not know the annual growth and output will be in canada or china or any other country during the coming year we don't know what that output would be we have we could have an estimate but this is random uh, for example today we don't know, we do not know how the dow jones industrial average will be uh, at the close of the next trading day even you know from one day to the other we cannot really know what exactly will be this is somehow short term and this is longer term like you know one year is a bit of a higher lo uh, you know uh, lower frequency while the one day is a higher frequency the sequence of random variables indexed by time is called the stochastic process or time series process. We, when we collect the, a time series data set, we obtain one possible outcome or realization, as I just mentioned before, of a stochastic process, like when we talk about unemployment and so on. We can, o we can only see a single realization at a time. So here I sp spoke about inflation and unemployment. and. Uh, and we have spoken about the murder rate and unemployment. So we think that there is a relationship between murder rate and unemployment. The more the people are unemployed, usually expect the murder rate to be higher in that country. And the more the unemployment is high, you know, we think that the inflation is going to be lower, right? So somehow uh, they are, you know, related, inversely related to one another. And this is what we know by Phillips curve. Now, this is a good definition of a stochastic process. A stochastic process is said to be called stationary if its mean and variance are constant over time and the value of the covariance between the two periods depends only on the distance or the gap uh, or the lag between the two periods and not the actual time at which the covariance is computed. Uh, your book can uh, talk more about this definition but basically what I want you to understand when we say a, a, a process let's say XT is covariant stationary or stationary 
uh, strongly stationary, we mean that the covariance of xt, xt plus h, so that you see that the gap between these two observations is only h, and it's equal to the covariance between xt and xt minus h, because the distance between these two, in absolute value, the difference between these two is h, right? So we can see that we believe that the covariance between these two uh, observations is equal to the covariance between these two observations, although there is a difference between the time uh, the relationship is equal to one another. A stochastic process yt is said to be called white weakly stationary or covariant stationary or second order stationary or white sense stationary. So these are all of these are synonyms to one another. And we say that the mean is equal to constant. So you see that this is not a function of time. And the variance is equal, you know, this is a definition of a variance. It's equal to sigma squared, which is also not a function of time. This is what we mean by weakly stationary or covariance stationary. And the covariance between these is only a function of the difference, the time lag between yt and yt plus k. So if you take these t minus t plus k in absolute value, it's going to be equal to k, which is going to be the covariance, which is a function of k. Now, what do you mean by autoregressive of order one? Autoregressive of order one is when we have a certain stochastic process, xt, and somehow we know the dependence structure between xt and xt minus one. So, for example, this is of order one because we only have because the observation only depends on the previous observation. That's why it's of order one. If it was of order two, then we have, you know, lambda two. This is lambda one, lambda two, xt minus two, and so on. But this is autoregressive of order one. Where we think that x0 is given, sometimes we're going to be assuming it for now as equal to 0, you know, just for convenience. And the error terms here are iid, uh, normal, uh, normal 0, sigma squared. And this is somehow, you know, if the process is iid, which is independently and identically distributed, normal random variable, it is very similar to a white noise. Basically, it is a white noise, but a white noise is not an independent and identically distributed process. Okay, and alpha and uh, lambda are constant parameters. Now, let's do some calculation. We know that xt is equal to alpha plus lambda xt minus 1 plus epsilon t. And basically, we know that if we replace t with t minus 1, we know that this relation holds. Now, there is, can we replace xt minus 1 with this value? Which is, the answer would be yes. And this would be alpha plus lambda into alpha plus uh, lambda xt minus 2 and so on which is equal to, you know, if we rearrange this, it will become alpha into 1 plus sigma into, you can see that there is a recursive relationship between xt and xt minus 1. Let's replace xt minus 2 by its value, which is alpha plus xt minus 3 plus epsilon t minus 1. So basically, I just replace t here by t minus 2, and we get this. So if we rearrange this, it would turns out to be the following, which is, can you see the sequential form of, of how things are going? So basically, we can write this as, alpha summation of lambda j here for example m is equal to 2 but you know usually m could be any number and this is the same as that and we have here lambda m plus 1 into xt minus m minus 1 so for m equal to t minus 1 we could show that uh, xt which is defined as a summation so here here i just chose m to be t minus 1 so if we choose n to be t minus 1, we know that this x0 is constant and it's known. For convenience, we're going to assume this is 0, so this goes to 0. But in general, this is a generic form of xt. And for m equal to k minus 1, so basically there is only k variables between xt and xt minus k. This is very important for us to compute the covariance relationship between, uh, uh, between xt and xt minus k, which is what uh, a process uh that is helpful for us to understand the covariance uh, structure between xt and xt minus k which should be a function of k and we want to see if this is true or not uh, let's assume that the expected value of x0 although x0 is not random but here let's assume it is random and this is equal to zero then we can see that the expected value of this is nothing but the sum of the expectations and therefore, you can include the expectation inside of the uh, summation. And this would lead us to, you know, this is equal to 0, since e of x0 is equal to 0. And we know that this is a constant. The expectation of a constant is a constant. And this, we know that the expectation of the error term, since these error terms are normally distributed of mean 0 and variance sigma squared, this is equal to what? 0, right? So we are left with this. This is a geometric series. And the sum of the geometric series is given by 1 minus lambda t over 1 minus lambda. 
and the variance is the same somehow the variance this is a constant this is a constant the variance of of the variable is nothing but the variable uh, the vari uh, the variance of the variable and basically if we we can include the variance into the sum you can look at the formula sheet uh, the formula sheet is given in, um, in so i just want to show you that if you go to your uh, google classroom you will see that i'm uh, posting all my stuff over here which is uh, all my lectures so you will see here are my lectures so this is introduction lecture one lecture two part b and these are the lecture notes materials so if you would like to have a go these are you know additional information that you can go through these are the notes of the previous lecturer or your first lecturer so you will see that uh, these are the information that we have and uh, basically um, this is what you need now the very important thing is this formula sheet so this formula sheet I will somehow update it from time to time to, because it seems that uh, we have more and more um, you know uh, formulas that you need to know as we move on so if I felt that uh, at any point in time that we need uh, that I need to add some additional uh, you know mathematical formulas so that you know how to do th things I will you know I will update this formula sheet but this is a very important formula sheet that I'm expecting each and every one of you to know so yeah uh, that's basically it. and these are the tutorial questions so these are the TSM uh, questions that you will see so all of these should be able to help you and here you will see that I'm always constantly gonna be sending you messages that you can see them on your you know applications if you have Google Classroom so it has it supports Android uh, Apple products which is uh, iOS and obviously you can go and see you know this website on your on your laptops or on your computers so that's why I really prefer to use Google Classroom okay and of course here you can see your friends and your teachers and so on so that was uh, uh, I'm gonna continue so you can see that the variance we here we spoke about that the variance is gonna be the variance of the variable as it is and the variance of the variable be because you know because of the property of the variance that we have spoken about if uh, you can see this in your um, in your formula sheet that the variance of so here we see the variance operator so the variance of the of the sum or the variance of a is equal to, is equal to a squared variance of a so if you know this small a is is a constant and big a is a variable it's going to be only the a squared times a variable variable of a so here we go again so the sum from j equal to 0 up to t minus 1 is equal to lambda 2j sigma squared because the variance of this error term is sigma squared and you can take the sigma squared outside the sum so this becomes sigma squared the sum of uh, lambda 2 uh, squared j so you can see that this is what uh, geometric series with with a constant term being lambda squared so this becomes sigma squared 1 minus lambda 2t over 1 minus lambda squared we have shown that xt is equal to this right and I told you that this is important for the covariance structure between xt and xt minus k and the covariance of xt and xt minus k is given by this remember if you go to the formula sheets you will see that uh, here it is so the covariance between x and the constant is zero and the covariance between uh, x and y is the same as the covariance of y and x covariance of y y is a variance of y but if we spoke about here covariance of a a plus b is a covariance of a b plus covariance of a c which is written over here so we're going to be using this property so the covariance of the variable here is the same as the covariance between this and the constant which is zero the covariance of this and the random variable over here which is somehow zero because all the future uh, error terms do not depend on the past observation remember that we said that the, as we spoke about stationarity we said that the future cannot predict the past right or cannot change the past but the past can change the future and therefore the covariance between xt and and the error terms over here is equal to zero but we still have the covariance between this term and that term which we know that the covariance between xt and xt minus k which is the same variable is equal to the variance so we're going to show you this in a moment so the covariance of this is just the covariance of each one independently as i just mentioned and we know that the covariance of a variable with a constant is zero 
and the covariance of uh, the relationship between two random variables that are independent from one another is equal to zero. 